just doing a comparison video on my mate's 2014 Bolden Brina CD and another mate's 2015 Bolden Brina RS. The CD, which I'm in at the moment, has 85 kilowatts from its 1.6 engine and a 5 speed manual gearbox, and the Bolden Brina RS has a 6 speed manual gearbox and a 1.4 turbo engine with 103 kilowatts. It's really good. <laughs> Obviously these aren't race machines, but just something nippy, manual is always fun. And it pulls all right. If you're in the right gear, then it's fine. There's obviously such a small amount of weight. And being in this compared, compared to it in my old Commodore, which is a wagon, this is just so nimble. Obviously it's great around town, parking and all that kind of thing. But this is fun up on, in the windy bends and stuff. Holden's a good brand to own because in Australia because they're so popular like so getting parts are going to be cheap and easy to get that's the main thing one of the things I learned when I moved to Australia early on was no matter where you are in Australia you can get parts for a Holden so if you're traveling up bush which obviously is not going to affect many people but if you do get stuck and you need a part there's a chance they might be able to find it Whereas if it's something slow more ex exotic, then they won't. Which is exactly why I've never bought a Lambo, just in case. I think I read different acceleration, 0 to 100 times. They were pretty poor, so I wouldn't be looking to get one of these if 0 to 100 k's an hour is your main priority, that's for sure. But it's nippy enough. If you're driving around town and that's all you really need it for with the occasional trip further away, like this is all you need. Usual thing you'd expect to have on a steering wheel these days is all the volume controls. It's got cruise control, which is pretty awesome. That's a must as far as I'm concerned. And pretty tidy little spot with the USB charging point and then you can still put the phone in next to it, which is a major oversight on a lot of cars. You can charge charge your phone, but then it doesn't sit anywhere properly. And all cup holders should have these, so you can put variable sizes of cups there. Such an oversight in some vehicles. It's got a mirror on the driver's side, which is just perfect. So then I can sort my beard out. And of course, the digital display for the speedo and then the analog rev counter. That is a perfect match. That's how all cars should be in my opinion. It's clarity and that's all you need. Traction control off button. Just in case, but I'm not gonna mess around with that. As it's my friend's daily, and I don't think she'd appreciate it if I, yeah, was thrashing it. Another thing most cars don't have is a handle on the driver's side. I think that's to not encourage you to have your hand off the wheel, but really we know it should be encouraged, especially if you're cornering really fast, which you would be. There she is in all her glory, 1.6 litre of Aussie muscle. It's got 15 inch rims, rear drum brakes though, that's a bit disappointing. The rear lights look pretty sporty, which is pretty cool look. A bit plasticky too though. And then some fake air vents at the front there. That one's real, that one's half real. I like that finish, that's cool. That's another thing I love with these. Apart from it's locked. Um, having these handles up here makes the line so much cleaner. Same as Alphas have that on, I think, the 146. The seats fold down flat, so there's plenty of storage space.
another thing. Like, it seems the more normal run around kind of a car, the more they think of everything. Maybe they've got more time to think of the little things, but having a charging point in there, it's nice and tidy and everything. Then you've got that little cutout for the cable. In my Commodore, it doesn't have the cutout for the cable. So when you put it in the center here, you just have to either keep it open or partly crush the cable. Just driving in the 2015 Holden Verena RS. Instantly you can tell the difference between that extra 20 kilowatts. And just from that alone, I'd say to go for the more expensive, if you can afford it, RS. Just makes it that more fun and that also more manageable when you're going up the longer steep hills. Aside from it being the RS, there's not too much different in it. Um, there's a few weird little things like the cup holders don't have that prongy bit to uh, support bigger uh, drinks, different size drinks and things. One good thing is that instead of having the handle there, it's for putting sun glasses there. Obviously it's a six speed, as I mentioned before. Um, you got nice little RS badges here and there on the tachometer, which you can't see there, which is pretty cool. Nice uh, red stitching in the steering wheel and it's flat there, which just gives it a bit more of a racy feel. And then you got RS on the seats, which is cool. I'm pretty sure this is fake leather. It doesn't feel sturdy enough to be normal leather, but anyway, they're pretty nice. Quite supportive. Slightly more modern display screen there. The RS has got 17s and rear disc brakes. And of course it says RS on the back there. Nice fake air vents on the back. It will be plasticky, but pretty standard these days. Well, that's interesting. It seems to have a limiter, three and a half thousand RPM, so you can't rev it up. So that's as good a sound as I could get to you, even though the actual rev limiter whilst you're driving it is seven, uh, six and a half thousand. As I didn't have to reverse before, I didn't realize, but this has got a rear camera and parking sensors. So that's pretty flash. It's not actually a great amount of space in the back here. We'll see the seat set to my height, six foot. I mean, you can fit, but you wouldn't want to be going too far on a long road trip or anything like that. Electric windows in the back, that's always good. Just to summarize then, I'd definitely be going for the RS if you can afford the extra. It's just that much easier to live with, going up longer hills and all that kind of thing. And a bit more fun if it's your only car and you're kind of into driving. Um, yeah, it's slightly more economical as well. I think six, 0.4 liters of fuel per 100 Ks, as opposed to the CD, which is 6.8. Can't see too much over there. So not too much in it, but may as well get something sportier and potentially more economical. Compared to my Commodore which is a SV6 wagon. That's uh, about 9.2 slash 9.5, I get out of that. And there's some Should have gone in first then. I saw those dickheads earlier actually. Good job, 5.0, you get them, bad boys. just 
that bit more fun in the corners. Exiting, you've got that extra power, you change down. But also if you leave it in third, generally you'll be in the rev band where you're, the turbo's picking you up, pulling you out, so it's pretty good. I'd get the extra money 